I knew that there was something wrong with me. I I felt like I was out of control. Um, I'd gone to England to visit my mum. I was planning on staying there for a month and I ended up only staying for like three or four days um, because all I could think about was doing more ecstasy pills and, you know, just hanging out with people and I just couldn't um, really... I wasn't comfortable without drugs. I just started university that year and um, a couple of guys from my English class were went to NA. <laughs> um, and I don't even know how I found out about that, but I, I did. And uh, I, asked, I asked one of them if he would take me to a meeting. And he took me to a meeting and I spent the next three years clean and sober until I moved back to London. I started working in a bar um, and although I didn't drink, I, I met a guy um, there who I really liked for some reason and um, he it was a crack cocaine addict, although I didn't know it at the time. Um, and then soon enough I found out and I wanted to try it, I was curious and I tried that and you know that was me really. I mean, it was fun. It was fun for, a, like, a short while, you know? And um, after that, it got pretty... It got pretty serious pretty quickly. I mean, and I couldn't tell you the point where, where all of that changed because I didn't like the taste of alcohol. So I wouldn't... So I didn't use alcohol to come off the crack. I used heroin, and then soon enough, like, I had a, a heroin addiction too, <laughs> which is you know, had to be maintained. And um, yeah, it took a long time to uh, finally break the habit. I mean, it's a huge secret to keep from everyone, every, like every single person that there is, except for, you know, my, my boyfriend, Ian, you know, and every, I couldn't make any friends because I never had any money. I never, I didn't even eat, really. You know, never bought any food anyway. I remember one day not being able to get any drugs. And I remember just being like curled up on the, in the middle of the bed the whole 24 hours, you know, like dying for more drugs. And that was it, it was my life. That was what it was. It was just about getting these drugs and smoking them and being, and it was just like a relief you know, and then, and then it was like, well, well, we need more. I had difficulty going back, like showing my face at meetings after relapsing all the time because I just felt really embarrassed and it was like a humiliating feeling to keep going back and saying, I've relapsed again, I've relapsed again. I do remember saying and thinking that I, I'm out of control and it really worried me. Um, and I, I remember going to meetings then and, and saying, I don't know how to be. It's a really kind of strange thing to say, but I didn't know how to be, you know? I suppose since then, like, I've really, <laughs> like, become much more kind of self-aware and and not only self-aware, like at doing things to, to keep myself on the right kind of path, on the best path, you know, that I can. Um, yeah, and I, I mean, things are like never per perfect, but things are, are good, really. <laughs>